Hi everyone, my name is Kylie and I chose to write a Sestina. So after reading through all of the various forms of poetry that we could use for this project, I chose to write an elegy. And then uh, after having written some of my elegy, I realized very quickly that I wanted a poem that had a little bit more structure to it because my elegy was getting far too long. and. Uh, I needed something that provided a bit more structure. So I flipped through the poetry packet and found Elizabeth Bishop's Sistina, appropriately titled Sistina, and I really was captivated by a number of things that the Sistina had. So here are a few of them and here are a few reasons why I chose to write ultimately a Sistina. So I was captivated by the creative utilization of these six words that you have to use at the end of each stanza. Um, I liked that this provided a sense of structure and a challenge. Uh, however, I also liked that the Sistina offered flexibility with no set rhyme scheme or meter, which allowed me to not be restricted by rhyming pattern in any way. And I liked the structured length of the poem as well. Instead of the open-endedness, um, I was struggling with figuring out in an elegy or in other forms of poems like an ode. Um, I really liked that the Sistina had a set length to it. Um, and this structure all gave me a freedom to write creatively within each line of the poem and challenged me to try and make each word, um, use, to use each word differently in each stanza that I had in the previous one, even though you're dealing with the same six words. So as I mentioned above, I was inspired by Elizabeth Bishop's appropriately named Sistina uh, in our poetry packet, but I was also inspired by a number of poems that I found on the Poetry Foundation website, including uh, John Ashbery's poem, Farm Implementation, and Rutabagas in a Landscape, which is as fascinating and interesting and unique as it sounds. One of his six words is spinach, so it's I really recommend looking it up and reading it. Uh, another one that inspired me from the Poetry Foundation website was The Guest Ellen at the Supper for Street People by David Ferry. Uh, his poem is beautiful and it encouraged me to creatively use my six words. I also want to mention before reading my poem that this poem is about my mom. Uh, I was writing an elegy like I mentioned and that was about someone else and then I wrote another poem about someone else and I think ultimately in my heart, I just knew I needed to write a poem about my mom. Um, and I think it was just time to focus on her in my writing. So that's what I felt when writing this poem. And without further ado, uh, this is my poem. This is my Sestina called My Mother's Dreams. And thank you all for listening. <sighs> I'd like to crawl within myself and descend into a sleep resting deep inside my heart among cavernous oceans of silence, live within the sun-kissed walls and flamingo hues of my dreams. My eyelids lit by the stars, I will listen to the sacred darkness, hear the shadows whisper me their unspoken thoughts. I know I can't live in this forever, but could I please for one more night? My mother visits me after a lonesome drive at night. I cook a half-course meal after I coax her callousness to sleep. We cultivate jealousy of our past selves with remember when thoughts. Our forks puncture undercooked green beans as we chew in stubborn silence. The electric bill was forgotten. We clean dishes in the darkness. She speaks of her buried hopes and her crusted unearthed dreams. My mother laughs when I ask if she will pursue her dreams. She says, I left those at his house 40 years ago that night. I imagine the weight of guilt my mother has carried in her darkness. I wonder if she too would like to slink within herself and plummet to a sleep. Forty years she's worn the guilt of a man's sin. Does she dream of finding solace in silence? I want to crawl inside my mother's head and page through her smothered thoughts. She lights a candle in the fireplace and we hear the flame crackle with its thoughts. Do you hear it laughing at us, she says. It's only just beginning to discover its dreams. She sits beside me on the couch in her jeans as we stare at the flames in silence. I compare our ankle widths. She slaps my hand and says, that's for daytime, not the night. The tulips on the porch close in on themselves, thankful to the sun for letting them sleep. My mother puts her head on my shoulder, her worries siphoned by the darkness. 
I wonder why my mother is averse to herself as I see her face caressed by darkness, the skin of her cheeks aglow as I picture her avoiding her deepest thoughts. First grade, she used to rub my forehead when I went to sleep. Sixth grade, when we both were filled with dreams. Outside, the coyotes call up to the moon, their mistress in the night. I feel my mother's breathing. She unshackles her worry for a moment in silence. What happens to a daughter when you fill up her hurt with silence? Does she overflow with anger or patch over her light with darkness? What happens to a girl who suffered secrets in the night? She keeps them to herself, her head a prison for her captive thoughts. What happens to a woman who gives up on her dreams? She visits them each night when she is allowed to wade in sleep. She has learned to suffocate silence so as not to hear her thoughts. Maybe in the honest darkness she can swim in the ocean of her dreams. I heard my mother's breath that night as she was swallowed into sleep. And this is the full poem. And thank you all of you for listening.